Hello friends, welcome back to Daily. Today we're reading in Matthew. This is Matthew 13, this is part two. I'll say a quick word of prayer for us and we'll get started. God, thank you for this uh, message you have for us today. And I pray that uh, the Holy Spirit lets it um, come into our hearts and better understand Jesus and his teaching. Amen. Parable of the Wheat and Weeds Explained. Then leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the harvesters are the angels. Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the Father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovers a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down and sorted the good fish into the crates, but threw the bad ones away. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? Yes, they said, we do. Then he added, every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Then they scoffed, he's just the carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother and brother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Well, in chapter 13, we're in the section where Jesus is continuing to teach in parables. Remember, these are kind of stories that represent stuff. And this is a neat one because, again, Jesus is actually going to explain this parable that we just read yesterday, this parable of the wheat and the weeds, the idea that this farmer ends up planting a field of wheat, that overnight, basically, all of a sudden, they come out and they realize that one of their enemies came and planted weeds in there to try to destroy his crop. He says, don't take and try to pull the weeds. You'll ruin the wheat as well. Wait until harvest, and then we'll separate those two. And they end up asking Jesus, hey, what is this all about? He explains it in this first section, verse 36 down to verse 43. And let me just break it down for you really clear just to make sure you get it. He says basically that there's the son of man, him, Jesus, who is the farmer who's planting seed. That's the message, of course. Then there's that seed that becomes grain. That's the people of the kingdom of God. That's any of us who have trusted, put our trust in Jesus and become part of his kingdom. But then there are also these weeds who are basically people who belong to the evil one. They don't belong to Jesus. They're not what he planted. And of course, the evil one, his enemy, is the devil who ends up planting those in amongst us. And he says, basically, there's also this harvest time where everything will be sorted out and that of course is the end of the age 
where it will be decided who has put their trust in Christ, who are part of the kingdom, and who have not. And there will be this separation. And it won't be based upon just our location, but who we are. Now, this is an interesting story because I think it really is important for us to get, as Jesus followers, as believers, that for us, this world around us is surrounded by both us who are wheat and also those who are weeds. That sounds really mean, but basically it says that they're both planted in the same field. And this is really important because I think sometimes we just think, well, I'm a Christian, they're a Christian. If we say that we love Jesus, we're all on the same team. But it's important to realize that what he's kind of speaking to is the idea that they'll be intermingled in the same field. It's not about where we are, it's about who we truly are. And that the enemy plants these people in order, I think, to choke out those who actually are the wheat, to choke them out and keep them from producing the kind of fruit that they're supposed to. That kind of goes back to what we said yesterday, producing fruit the idea of leading others to become basically Jesus followers as well, 30, 60, 100 times. Three big things I want you to see in this. One, just because you're in the field doesn't mean you belong to the farmer, right? The weeds are in the field, but they don't belong to the farmer. The very same in the church. There are people who are in the church who don't belong to Jesus. I always like that saying. They say, you know, just like, being in a garage doesn't make you a car. Being in a church doesn't make you a Christian, right? There are plenty of people in the church who actually don't belong to Jesus. They belong to the enemy, which is important for us to understand. That's kind of point two out of this, is that the enemy is happy for you to believe that you are a Christian as long as you aren't. The enemy is happy for you to go to church, to pretend that you're a Christian, to be part of that community, as long as you're off just enough that you actually aren't putting your trust in him. And actually, that's a best case scenario for him because it would be one thing if he's like people who are like all out enemies, like, oh, like I hate God and trying to fight against him. That can do some damage to the kingdom of God. But you know what's way more damaging? People who act like Christians, but then don't actually trust in Jesus. They're weeds amongst the wheat. And what they do is they they siphon off the energy of that wheat until they're not really productive anymore. Which brings us to our third main point that we must know. Harvest is coming. A judgment day is coming, and at the end, listen, God will perfectly separate those who are wheat and those who are weeds. There will be tons who will be in the church, who will be part of this body thinking, oh, we're Christians, and then they'll be separated, and there'll be those who are fruitful and those who are wheat and those who said, you are just weeds. You never actually belong to me. Which takes me to this question of reflection today. Are you wheat or are you weeds? It's a scary statement because you're like, well, I'm here, I'm at church. That's not a clear enough picture, right? One of the things we could ask ourselves is this, is Jesus tending to us? The farmer would tend to his wheat, wouldn't tend to the weeds. Is Jesus the one you love? Is he the one who's filling your life with the nourishment that you need? Or do you just go to church? Do you just kind of read the Bible, but it doesn't have anything really deep inside of you? You don't love the farmer. You don't love Jesus. Perhaps you're fooling yourself. Last, I would encourage you to act. Do not let yourself be choked out by weeds who are pretending to be wheat. If you're a Jesus follower, one of the really important things we got to do over and over again is survey the people around us who are our friends who say they are Christians, and we need to identify and say, are they really, or are they just weeds who are trying to choke out my own productivity? If that's the case, we need to cut those people out of our life, and we need to tell them to turn to Jesus. This is an important one. I hope you take the next step. Let me know in the comments kind of what comes to your mind with all of this because this is definitely a harsh and deep one. I would love to have more conversation on it. Move forward by faith today.